Hello, welcome to the Robocon presentation on the Robot Framework Language Server. My name is Fabio Zadrozny. I'm also the creator of PyDev, as well as the PyDev debugger, which is used on other IDs such as Python VS Code and PyCharm. So a year ago, Robocorp got in touch with me to create a language server for Robot Framework. And here I am today, and I hope you enjoyed the presentation on the language server. So the topics we are going to cover today are language server 101, which will give you a brief introduction on the subject. And then we are going to take a look at the robot frame language server structure so that you can know how to configure it properly and give you some hints there. And then we are going to proceed to take a look at the features available and how to actually use it. And I'm going to demo it a bit. So language server 101. Actually, the language server, it's just like one main protocol, which is the language server protocol. And there is another protocol which usually is expected from, from extensions in general and plugins, which is the debug adapter protocol. Actually, one it's not dependent on the other, but usually when you have an extension which launches some script and like robot framework itself, it's expected that you actually implement both protocols. So the language server, the robot framework language server actually implements both protocols so that you can debug programs and you can also have things like code analysis and code completion and things like that. And the idea for a language server is actually that you have a single program which can give you code completion, code analysis, syntax highlighting, and things like that. And then you can use that same server in multiple editors and IDs. So for instance, the robot framework language server, it's, it's well integrated right now in VS Code. And there is a VS Code extension for it which is actually not the same as the language server. There's like a separate program that actually just starts the language server. On some editors like NewVim, you just have some, usually some configuration like a JSON where you describe how to start the language server. And for VS Code, that's a VS Code extension. And for PyCharm and IntelliJ, we are actually working on a, on a plugin which does that too, which will start it up for you and do the integration for the client. And it's actually used on other places like um, Jupyter Lab, actually Robocorp Lab, which integrates Jupyter and integrates the language server in the Jupyter environment for, for Robot Framework. So let's talk a bit about the Robot Framework and the service structure. First, it's a Python program. So you only need Python 3.7 onwards to use it. And you also need Robot Framework 3 onwards to use it. It's actually composed of two different processes. It's, it has a main process, which is configured by the robot language server Python. And you can also pass arguments to it if you want. You usually don't need it, but in case you need it, you get log information there. And then you have the target process. By default, it's going to use the same Python, which is used for the main process but you can specify a different environment if you want, which is useful if you have multiple environments. And for the target process, you can specify the environment variables you want to use, as well as the Python path and any variables you want to have in your files, especially if you're going to like resolve some library or import, you want to specify the, those variables if they're using libraries so that the language server can find those. Okay, we now have the basic structure in place, so you can start the language server and configure it properly for your environment. And now we're going to take a look at some features. Well, let's start with showing some of the features that are available in IntelliJ. The IntelliJ release is actually brand new. So keep in mind that it's still in alpha and some glitches may be expected, but it may be already useful to you. The first feature I want to show is code completion. So you have code completion for section headers and you can import some library, let's say RPA browser. The other feature I want to show is code completion for keywords. 
Let's create a simple task. So when I start typing, you can see that the keywords that are available are already show here. And it also shows code completions for variables that are still not imported. For instance, I can select append then environment variable, which is from the operating system library. And when I select it, it should automatically add that code completion as well as the library import. Now, besides code completion, I will want to show you three more features which are available in the integration. The first one is code analysis. So if you have some syntax error, code analysis will get it and will show it to you. And if you have some undefined keyword, code analysis will also show that to you. Then you have the workspace symbols available, which will actually show you the keywords available in the workspace. So you can filter them and go to its definition. And then you will also have the go to definition itself. So for instance, I can control click some name on some keyword and it will take me to its definition. And those are the main features available in the IntelliJ integration. Now to finish, let's take a look at the remaining features at VS Code. Those are still not available in the IntelliJ integration, but hopefully they will be there soon. First thing I want to show is signature help. So it's possible to get signature help, which will show you the arguments as well as the doc strings for some keyword. And not that it's actually possible to get code completion for the arguments using code completion, but sometimes it's just useful to actually take a look at the keyword information itself. And the next feature I want to show is code formatting. So for instance, I can request code formatting. And I also can set the code formatting to run on save. Now, the last thing I want to show is launching and debugging. So I have a simple program here. It has a library and we set a variable and then we we'll open the browser at the given URL. And then we close our browsers and we have some logging before and after. So let's set a breakpoint when I enter the function and on teardown. And let's create our launch JSON. You can use code completion to create the, our launch. You can see that the target file is the currently open file. So we can save it. We could actually say a specific file here or even a folder, and we could actually customize the arguments if you wanted, or set the environment variables. So we can click here, and by default clicking here, it will debug the, the program. And as you can see, it will show the variables, arguments, as well as built-ins available. And it will also show us the call stack. So one other nice thing here is that we can actually evaluate custom keywords. So if we get something wrong, like uh, undefined keyword, it would complain that the keyword's not there. But We can also use it to actually evaluate keywords. And as you can see, 
it will in this case like I'm setting the global variable and it's changing the URL to that variable so you can see that the URL is actually robotframers.org in this case as we've changed it and we can step over and it will open the browser as you can see and then we can also step in to functions we can see the variables at those functions and we can resume the execution to stop at the next breakpoint in this case we are stopping at tier down and that's it i hope you enjoyed the presentation and if you want more information feel free to check the lsp channel on slack or the language server repository in github thanks bye Hey Fabio, welcome to Robocon. Hi, nice to be here. Great to have you. We have a lot of questions coming in. Uh, first one is, it's really nice. Is there a step-by-step -step guide on how to get this to run with PyCharm? Mm, not yet, but it should be simple. You just install from the marketplace and that should be it. You may have to specify the Python executable afterwards, but besides specifying the Python executable and getting it from the PyCharm marketplace, everything should work out of the box. Does this integrate with custom library? Yes, uh, it should be able to pick any library you have imported and it should generate like a lib spec for it. And after that, it should be everything should be like work out of the box. It should yes. get that you change the library afterwards and it should regenerate the lib spec files. It should do everything for you. And if it's not working, it should show you an error saying why that didn't work. Would it be possible to combine LSP with RoboCop and Tidy? Yes, it should be possible. Uh, actually, I thought uh, I talked yesterday with the RoboTidy and RoboCop Cop creators, and that's probably going to happen sometime in the future. There, there's still no like nice. a date for it, but it should happen. Uh, do you have a roadmap of what features are coming up next? Um, my next feature will be a better coloring for PyCharm. So I'm working on this, hopefully within the next, like this week or next week, a new release with better coloring for PyCharm will be out. And after that, it's still not defined, but there are many things to do. So, yeah. Wait, is this <laughs> also free to, to create an issue on, on the GitHub project page and, and ask for what you want? Perfect. Uh, they want to know, does this integrate with both PyCharm and Eclipse? Right now it integrates with PyCharm and VS Code. Uh, for Eclipse, I know you can, you have like the generic editor for Eclipse and it has integration with language servers. So I think you should be able to get it running there too, but I still haven't done it myself. Like, but it, it would be the same for Emacs or VI or New Zealand or whatever. Uh, is the language server available as a PyCharm plugin? Could not find it in the marketplace. It is. It, I'm not sure why you didn't find it. Maybe search for RoboCorp uh, because it's a RoboCorp plugin. It should appear. Uh, but if you search for like Robot Framework Language Server, it should also appear. Great. And time probably for one last question. Time goes by okay. fast. Uh, this is from Slido. Renee wants to know, are you interested in contributing to LSP core, like code refactoring and implementation of new features? And what about the VS Code plugin? There's so much more possible. Sure, if you're interested in contributing, contributions are accepted and I'm waiting for it. <laughs> and yeah, there's lots of things to do. I'm just looking for any quick, fast questions. Can I use the VS Code robot plugins at the same time? Uh, I'm not sure I understand. Can I use the other VS Code robot plugins at the same time? I don't know. Let me pass on that. Yeah, maybe I, 
I don't know, but like it's supposed to have, if you just install it, I know it should work, but I'm not sure what other plugins it, you would have installed. So maybe there could be a conflict, but I don't know. It depends on what, what you want to use. So time for one last question from Richard. He says, does it integrate with ro remote lib? Uh, I have never tried it, but it should. If it doesn't, please create an issue on the repository. Awesome. Thanks so much, Fabio. People seem really excited by this. So uh, hopefully uh, uh, you're going to get a lot of good feedback and hopefully we'll see you in the Robocon venue during the, uh, the, uh, the, yeah. the get together. Yeah, I'll go to the speaker's deck there so and I'll be able to talk if you want. Awesome. Thanks again, Fabio. Appreciate it. Okay. Bye. Cheers.